Today we're talking with David Carlisle, who works on a very exciting project. And um, so I'd like to introduce David right now. Hi. Hi, David. Can you tell us a little bit about the project you're working on in text that you're working with? Sure. So the project is called Cyrus's Paradise, um, and it's a online, what we're calling a commentary um, for uh, uh, Xenophon Cyropidea. <clears throat> so um, I'll tell you a little bit about the text and then a bit about uh, what we mean by commentary. So the text is um, this sort of uh, pseudo novel, pseudo, uh, it's, it's a bit like a novel, a bit like a um, philosophical discourse. Um, about the education of Cyrus and especially about how he came to become a uh, ruler of the Persian Empire and found the Persian Empire. And uh, he, and uh, it, it's written by Xenophon of Athens um, and is presented as a sort of a instructional ma manual or um, a lesson in leadership. Um, and it was an incredibly influential text for a long time, um, but has recently uh, lacked in critical uh, contributions to its scholarship, so it's in desperate need of some kind of a um, up-to-date uh, commentary that's available and accessible for um, just the general populace. Uh, so that's that's the text, and then we decided when creating this commentary to make it into um, what we're calling a commentary, which is to say that it's a, a living, breathing kind of a commentary that people can continue to update it. Um, and continue to uh, contribute to it um, as time goes by. It will um, it will change with the times, change with the scholarship, the current scholarship, and adapt to um, the needs of people rather than just being a, uh, rather than being a printed book that uh, once it's published falls out of date within a certain amount of time. Okay, that's exciting. Can you tell me a little bit about who you think might be uh, interested in participating, or who is invited to participate? Sure. So the, the core group um, it started with uh, three of us, uh, myself and uh, Alan Romano and then Norman Sandridge, who's kind of the, the, uh, our fearless leader. He's the one who put a lot of this together. Um, and then we expanded a bit and started including some other people, Sarah Ferrario, uh, R Ryan Fowler, and Jennifer Gates Foster. Um, and I've got the acknowledgments page up here. You can see a lot of other people, of course, have helped us along the way. Um, all, all the support uh, that we had from the Center for Hellenic Studies was really uh, wonderful in putting this project together. Um, and then uh, in February, we made, or well, in January, we made a decision to um, to invite people in February to um, invite people who wanted to come and contribute to the commentary to generating the first sort of set of comments. So we just opened it up to people who uh, volunteered to join us um, last June uh, for a uh, what we called a virtual symposium, where a lot of people got together over a couple of weeks and uh, read through the text and posted questions about it and then responded to each other's questions. Um, and it was all done online virtually, but uh, we got a really interested community going there, a lot of interesting dialogues going back and forth. And the product of, that, of those dialogues um, is right there on the site for anybody to read now. Um, to see what some of the things are that people are doing when they, uh, that um, scholars are doing when they're reading through this text. Great. Can you take us on a, on a little tour of the site? Sure. So um, the, the page that you'll get to if you just open, if you just go straight to syropidea.org um, is a sort of a informational page um, with this very bold claim, the future of reading ancient literature and uh, some, some information about uh, what the project is. So. Uh, if people are interested in learning more about that, they can. I would advise them to start there. Um, and then you'll notice that on the right-hand side of the page, there are three tabs. Um, and these are ways of kind of keeping track of what's going on on the commentary and where you are in the commentary at any given time. So uh, every page, because of the format that we're using, um, a, a plugin for WordPress called Comment Press, every page that's created on here is commentable on a paragraph by paragraph level. Um, and then on the right hand, this tab comments uh, tab will just list all of the comments that have been left on the page and then on each paragraph. Um, you can see nobody's commented on this page yet because it's not part of the core text. Um, and then in the middle here we have an activity page and that's another way of kind of keeping track. It will give you comments that have been left on the, the particular page you're looking at and also um, depending on where you are in the site, it will give you uh, comments that have been left on in, uh, across the entire site. 
And then finally, there's a, con uh, a table of contents there, um, and all of the headings there are, are clickable and will take you straight to the page so that you can navigate through the entire site. You'll see a lot of this informational stuff we've put at the end in the table of contents, so you can go and look there um, for further reference. But if we just go straight to the um, first chapter of the first book, then you'll see um, this is what the, the commentary and it's, you know, the meat of the commentary really looks like. Um, we've got the text itself up with a little sort of summary heading and then you can click on any one of these little bubbles next to any of the paragraphs and that will bring up the current comments and also allow you to comment um, if you want to and if you're uh, logged in. Um, so I'll, I'll say in a minute about what the benefits are of logging in. Um, we've also added for people who might be uh, a little bit uh, rusty on their Greek or might just be developing their Greek, we've added a, a parallel site that is linked through these tuto tutorials and that brings up a lot more of the kind of nuts and bolts grammatical information about the site and also has a uh, audio file with um, one of us, depending on which chapter you're looking at, one of us reading, uh, reading the Greek aloud. Um, and then you can see there are a lot of notes with basic grammatical information. So you can always navigate over to here if you need a little more help with the Greek and then head back to the site uh, itself for comments. Um, so that's, that's the basic, uh, the core there. And then you can see there are also helpful navigational aids across the top here. You can move from page to page. So we can just use this little arrow to skip back and forth among the chapters if you want to read it like a book, sort of like turning the page there. Um, we can go straight back to the home page or we can go um, to uh, the title page, which has more information on how we rec recommend using the commentary. And then you can also see there are ways of just looking straight at the comments. So there are general comments on the page, the comments by commenter. So these are all the people that contributed to our little symposium here. Um, so all of the com anyone who's left a comment is listed here. And then you can just look, for instance, if you wanted to um, just look at the comments that Norman has left, then you can see them all list listed there. And then if any one of them really catches your attention, you can always navigate to that particular spot and see the comment in its context. <clears throat> and then finally, there's a sort of a parallel thing going on on the commentary, which is if, uh, if commenters, people who are participants, decide that they really want to um, sort of go on it longer uh, at a greater length than a comment form really allows if they want to really talk about a lot of different issues at once and do something that's a bit more analytical or, uh, or synthetic, then they can write a blog post. And so we have a blog going that you can see some of our symposium participants um, wrote some interesting <clears throat> um, examinations of different topics within the Cyrup idea. And of course, if we actually go to one of those, then since everything else follows this format, then those are commentable too. And you can see some, some of the symposium participants have actually started to comment uh, on the blog posts as well. Um, and then once blogs accumulate, so there's too many of them to post on this, on this main current blog entry page, then a blog archive gets created. So you can go in there and kind of poke around. Um, and then all of this is searchable by keyword here. If we do a search in here, for example, for Herodotus, this will bring up um, any uh, page that mentions Herodotus. Um, we can also search the comments for, for keywords, but that requires being logged in. So um, I, I can show you what that looks like if you have, if you register with the site, and registration is open to everyone, um, so I encourage people to go ahead and register with the site if they want to comment or if they want to author a blog post um, to get in touch with us and we can, we can promote them from being someone who just comments to someone who, uh, who can write blog posts as well. Anyway, if you go to, if you register with the site, then logging in will bring you to uh, a dashboard where you can actually look at the comments in this form. And once you've seen the comments there, then you can actually search them as well. Um, so for instance, searching Herodotus now brings up any mention of Herodotus anywhere in any of the comments. Um, and you can um, look through those and you can see 97 comments mention Herodotus. Wow. Um, so that's basically... Like you... Sorry. Yeah, so I was going to say, it seems like you have a lot of different ways for a broad range of people to participate. 
Yes, absolutely, and that's part of the part of the goal of the project is to fulfill the mission that um, the Center for Hellenic Studies has of trying to make classics a, a multi a multi generational endeavor um, to get people who are just starting out in Greek involved, but also um, to have really serious scholars uh, who have been who have been working on this idea for for years or decades even um, contributing as well to really try and bring as many people together. Uh, as possible who are interested in this topic into a community of scholars and uh, students that are that are working together on uh, on common ground here. David, it's really exciting. Can you just tell us if someone wants to learn more, what's the best thing to do? Well, I would say um, a great thing to do is to go straight to the site and register, um, and then uh, you you'll be able to see that um, if you post comments or if you uh, author blogs or anything like that. That there are a lot of ways of sort of following the site, um, following comments or responses to your own comments. So that'll kind of uh, that'll give you email updates, or or you can set up an RSS feed as well, um, so that you can keep track of what's going on on the site. And then just in terms of uh, getting more involved, if people want to do more than just than just comment, um, if they want to write blog posts, if they want to um, help out with the project, um, if they're interested in contributing to design, anything like that. Um, our contact information, there's a contact link on the site, um, and any ideas that people have, we welcome them. This is very much a collaborative project, and we really do, you know, we've benefited a lot from a lot of people bringing something new to the table. So, um, so that would be wonderful if we could get people, still more people involved in this. Okay, David, thank you so much. Again, this is Claudia Files from the Center for Linux Studies. I was talking thank with you. David Carlisle, the visiting assistant professor at Cornell College, and we're talking about Cyrus's Paradise. David, we hope to talk to you again soon and hear about how it's all developing. Great. Thank you very much, Claudia. Thanks so much.